Hey, Richard Bryce here, Tennis Hacker. In this video, I'm gonna be explaining how I'm gonna become a 5.0 player with my left hand. Now, I'm naturally a right-handed player, but I injured my collarbone in a mountain bike crash, so I've had to relearn to play left-handed. And when I started this journey just over two years ago, I set myself a crazy goal in my head of going, yes, I'm gonna become a 5.0 player, but at the time, I didn't have any idea whether that would be realistic or not. I just set a crazy goal to give myself some motivation because I was pretty upset about not being able to play right-handed anymore. But now I've been working at things for a while, I'm starting to become more confident that I'm gonna be able to achieve my goal. So in this video, I'm gonna be explaining what I need to do to make it happen. And I wanna start by talking about how I'm gonna evaluate myself. What does it mean to become a 5.0 player? Because a lot of players, when you ask them what level they play at, they kind of come up with a number, and it's not necessarily based in reality. So what I wanna do is show you the, the self-rating guides from the NTRP and the self-rating guide that we use in Canada, because I'm from, I live in Canada, and I wanna explain why they're gonna be terrible for evaluating my tennis level, and I'm gonna talk about what I actually need to do to become a 5.0 player, and how I'm gonna evaluate things less subjectively. Now at the moment, I would say I'm a 4.5 player because the players that I kind of practice with and do okay against are 4.5 players. So that's where I would kind of place myself. But if I look at the 4.5 rating, um, I'm not gonna achieve the standard, and I'll explain why. So this player can vary the pace and spin of shots, has effective court coverage, can control depth of shots, and is able to develop game plans according to strengths or weaknesses. So I can do that, but then when it starts to talk about hitting first serves with power and accuracy and being able to play second serves, I definitely fall down there because my serve sucks to say the least. The reason it sucks is because I haven't prioritized it. I wanted to be able to enjoy rallying and doing that side of things first. So that's what I've spent most of my time working on. So that in itself kind of places a limitation because I can compete at the 4.5 level without a decent serve because 4.5 players can't put away weak serves. That's a much higher level skill. And I know that they say serve is the most important shot in the game, but it's a little bit skewed and it all doesn't always work like people say it works. Now, if I kind of go down through it, the 4.0, my serve doesn't match the 4.0 criteria either. It's, does it match the 3.5? So based on the criteria, I'm kind of moving down more towards a 3.5 level. But oddly enough, if I read the 5.5 level, this player has developed pace and or consistency as a major weapon. This player can vary strategies uh, based on competitive situations and deals well under stress. So I fit into that category because it doesn't talk about hitting serves. Oh, I guess it does in this section on the right. It talks about serves, so I'm definitely not a 5.5. But I knew that anyway because I would say I'm around a 4.5. If I look at the Tennis Canada side of things, it's going to show a similar thing. Now, for the Tennis Canada ratings, they kind of break it down. Column one is uh, ground strokes. Column two is return of serve. Column three is doubles. Column four is serve. And for the ground stroke criteria, I do well at the 5.0 level. Um, so I do well on all the levels. But as soon as we get to serve, I am not a 5.0. I am not a 4.5. I am not a 4.0. I am, can vary the speed or direction, and uh, I'm not even confident that I can do that. Um, so I would say, based on this, because of my serve, I'd fit in at the 3.0. So depending on how you perceive the criteria, I can kind of fit in somewhere between 3.0 and 5.0, which is a very broad category, and I'm definitely not a 3.0, and I'm definitely not a 5.5 or a 5.0 yet. So this isn't gonna be an effective way to evaluate things, so I'm gonna explain how I am actually going to evaluate things uh, in Canada. So the way that I'm gonna evaluate my performance is based on tournament results, because match results are really the only way to show your tennis level. What your technique looks like and all that stuff doesn't matter, it's about winning matches because it's a sport that's how it works so that's the way that i'm going to evaluate myself now unfortunately we don't have a kind of league structure that would allow me to play regular uh, matches or anything like that what we have is a series of tournaments throughout the summer that are done at different levels 
So the strange thing here is that we can enter whatever level we want. So we can enter a 3.0, we can enter a 4.5, we can enter an open tournament. We just kind of choose what we want to enter. And that means two things. It means that sometimes tournaments can be really weak because players go, yes, I'm really good, I'm going to enter the 4.5s, and they're not 4.5s. But it also works the other way. Now, we don't have a 5.0 category, so a lot of the 5.0s play in the 4.5s. So there can be some sandbagging, because you enter an open tournament, you're playing against a, like a Div 1 college player, a former pro or a low-level pro, and they absolutely cream people. So to get good matches, 5.0s drop down to the 4.5s. So if you win a 4.5 tournament in this area, it's a pretty good size, you know, pretty good uh, gauge that you're a, a, a decent player. So we don't have that many tournaments. There's six in my area. If I went further afield, I could maybe stretch it to eight, but I don't want to have to do that much traveling. So I've got six tournaments to play in next year. And in terms of kind of validating performance, the way it works here is if you win two tournaments in a, a category in a season, you get bumped up and you're not allowed to play that category anymore. So my goal next year is to win two of the six 4.5 tournaments that there are in the area. So a fairly lofty goal, but that's what I'm going to be using to evaluate whether I'm actually a 5.0 player or not. So now that you understand the criteria, the next question is, what do I need to do to be able to win 4.5 tournaments? Or what does anyone need to do to be able to win 4.5 tournaments? And the answer is probably a little bit different to what you might be thinking, because you might be thinking, I need a massive serve so that I can hit aces and get lots of free points off my serve. I need a, a big weapon, so I need to be able to dominate my opponent with my forehand and again, lo get lots of free points. But in reality, that's not what's required to win at the 4.5 level. At the 4-5 level, or all levels in tennis, the person who loses is the one that makes the most mistakes. The person who wins is the player that's the most consistent. The only thing that changes as the levels go up is the type of shots that your opponents are able to hit increases. So to be consistent, you have to have a better shot tolerance. You have to be able to absorb a better quality of shot from your opponent and be able to return the ball with a reasonable level of quality. So at the four or five level, you know, if you get to a ball and you just plop it into the center of the court, in the opening rounds, that's probably gonna be okay. But as you get towards the later rounds, especially if I'm gonna be playing against some 5-0 players, they are gonna have the ability to punish that short ball. So that isn't something you can get away with. So in terms of consistency, it's not just getting the ball back any old how. You have to be able to absorb their quality of shot and get the ball back reasonably deep. Doesn't necessarily have to be hard, a little bit of pace can help, but at the four or five level, just hitting a decent amount of topspin and keeping things deep is enough to cause opponents a lot of problems. And if you get three, four, five balls back in a row, your opponent is gonna to start to panic and they're gonna miss the ball and they're gonna give you three points. And you just have to do that over and over again. It's not more complicated than that. If you think about the psychology of what's going on in your opponent's head, they're hitting great shots, you're getting to them, soaking it up, just putting the ball back deep, and then they've got to do it again and again and again, and they start to implode going, oh my God, what, am I, what have I got to do to get past this person? And they'll just start giving you points, and that is the way that you win at the 4.5 level. So I have to look at my own game and go, right, what do I have the ability to do? What do I not have the ability to do? What do I need to work on to be able to develop that sort of shot tolerance? So I want to kind of break my strokes down and break my strengths and weaknesses down now. So technically you start by looking at my forehand. Now my forehand definitely took me a while to feel comfortable with. I used to really struggle with loading off my left leg, my outside leg. And I used to really struggle with the spacing and I was getting way too close to the ball because I got a one-handed backhand as a right-handed player. So I've had to spend a lot of time working on that side of things, but I'm now at a point where I feel comfortable. Now here, obviously I'm hitting on a ball machine. I know where the ball's going. It's completely different to a match situation, but I've been uh, playing points against 4.5 players and my forehand is able to hold its own. It's consistent. I'm able to handle whatever my opponents throw at me pretty much and I'm able to get the ball back 
uh, deep and I've got a reasonably heavy forehand. So technically, I think my forehand is good enough uh, to certainly defend. My attacking capabilities are reasonably as well, uh, reasonable as well. So if I get a short forehand, I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna be able to uh, execute a, an aggressive shot on a consistent basis. So I can defend, I can attack, I can vary the type of shots that I hit. So my forehand, I'm confident that I could compete well now at the 4-5 level, but in six months time, it's gonna be a lot stronger, so it's gonna be good to go. Out of the two sides, uh, my backhand, I would have said, is stronger than my forehand until very recently. The last couple of weeks, I feel like I've really come on a lot with my forehand, so now I feel uh, that my forehand has just got stronger. But my tops and backhand, again, I feel confident I can vary the spin, I can hit flat, I can hit with more spin, I can go cross court. I feel uh, comfortable changing direction. So I feel like my topspin one-handed backhand is very able to compete at the 4-5 level um, as it stands. Having said that, when it comes to backhands, I tend to favor my slice backhand. This was definitely the case as a right-hander. My slice backhand was by far my best shot. And for whatever reason, it seems to be that way with my left hand as well. And I can tell you for sure that most 4.5 players do not like dealing with this type of slice. It's just not a shot that they, uh, they encounter very often. Most players hit flat or they hit with spin. Very few players have got a good quality slice. So I'm just gonna be using a lot of slice backhands to stay in the rally. So absorbing my opponent's forehand, keeping it back low, frustrating them. Hopefully they're gonna want to go down the line into my left-handed forehand that I can then hit heavy to their backhand. So this is a tactic that I plan on using a lot and uh, I'm hoping it's gonna be very successful at the 4-5 level. My net game is okay, um, definitely not amazing because I haven't really made it a priority to work on it. I was more concerned with getting the, the ground strokes and feeling comfortable from the back of the court because quite honestly, I don't need to come to the net to win at the 4.5 level. I'll be able to grind people down at the baseline and win from there. Now moving forwards, I definitely want to be coming to the net more because I'm not getting any younger. So to compete against younger players, I am gonna need to finish the points off more. But initially, I think to, to win at the 4-5 level, I'm gonna be okay with my net game as it is. Now with that said, in six months time, it's gonna have improved a lot from where it is now. So I've covered most of the, the main strokes other than the serve, which I'll be talking about at the moment, but I do want to talk briefly about some of these accessory shots like the slice forehand, because these can be very, very helpful at the four or five level. I used to have a wonderful squash shot with my right hand, probably because I grew up playing squash as well. But with my left hand, I've only just started working on them. But I can tell you for sure, this sort of shot crushes your opponent's soul. They've hit a great ball. They think they've made a winner. You lunge out, you slice the ball back. It goes deep, it skids on them. And instead of winning the point, they have to reset things. And that leads to a lot of errors. So I'm gonna be working on this sort of shot more and more as I go forwards, because they're so good for winning you three points at the four five level. Same thing goes for the drop shot. This definitely isn't gonna be a main strategy, but it's a wrinkle that I'm starting to work on to add to my game to create a little bit of extra variation. But having this ability can only come from having solid ground strokes. Once my opponent knows that I can hit a deep, heavy ball into their backhand over and over again, that's then gonna open up the opportunity for me to then play a drop shot. Definitely not gonna be a main tactic, but I'm starting to get more comfortable with this type of thing, and I'll continue to work on it over the next six months. And then that leaves me with the serve to talk about, and the serve is definitely my weakness. Now, it's not horrific, I can get the ball in, it's got a reasonable amount of pace, I can place it a little bit, so it's not the sort of shot that my opponent is gonna be able to just completely pick apart, but with that said, it is definitely not where I need it to be to feel like a 5.0 player, because yes, it's about match results, but it's also about confidence, and I am not confident in my serve at the moment. I can get the ball in, but in a tournament situation, is it gonna hold up under pressure or am I gonna start crumbling and throwing in double faults? There's definitely the possibility that the latter could happen. So I gotta do a lot of work on my, uh, my serve moving forwards. But what I do need to point out here is the reason why my serve isn't where it needs to be. I, I said earlier that I hadn't been prioritizing it and that's sort of true. 
the reason I haven't been prioritizing it is because I couldn't work on it because my shoulder mechanics and range of motion weren't good enough. I've had a lot of injuries in the past from the various different sports that I've played both on my right shoulder and the injuries that I've had on my left shoulder. So I'm very limited in left shoulder external rotation. So when I started playing left-handed, it was like there. And as soon as I started trying to serve, I got agonizing shoulder pain and loads of pain in my elbow. So what I really had to do is spend a lot of time working on this range of motion. So I've been doing a lot of strength exercises in end ranges, and I'm now able to get it back past 90 degrees, but it's a long way from being where it needs to be. Like if you watch all the best servers in the world, not me, the best servers in the world, they've got amazing external rotation because as you go into the racket drop, it's a requirement for having good racket head speed. So my serve is lagging behind, partly because I haven't worked on it enough, but the reason I haven't worked on it enough was because my shoulder mechanics were so poor, I wasn't able to do it safely. So one of the big things that I'm gonna be doing moving forwards is continuing to do strength exercises in the end range of motion, really try, trying to increase my shoulder strength and stability. And as I do that, combined with a little bit more practice on it, that's hopefully gonna get it to where I need to be because when I play the tournaments, by the time I get there, I would like to have my serve as a weapon. In the olden days, my right-handed serve was good. I could rely on it for three points. My second serve was very stable and that gives you a lot of confidence when you play. So ideally, before I start playing tournaments, that's where I'd like to get my left-handed serve to be. Am I gonna be able to get it there? I hope so. That's the only area that I'm not truly confident in, uh, but that's one of the big things that I'm gonna be working on technically moving forwards. But in addition to the technical side of things, I do a lot of other stuff to improve my game and I'm gonna be continuing to work on a number of things to ensure that I can become a 5.0 player. First thing is I do a lot of brain-based training. So this is something that I got into after sustaining a series of concussions. I started to learn about neuro rehab, about improving vision and coordination and balance and some of the different parts of the brain that get affected when you have concussions. And as I rehabbed from my concussions, I got a lot better at tennis. So I continue to train these parts of the brain to continue to improve my health and also to continue to improve my performance. Now, I've also been developing a piece of VR software to help with this. So I previously used to do kind of different eye exercises using my hands and you know, various different tools, but I'm now developing this software to improve the quality of brain training that I can do on myself. And the prototype that I'm developing at the moment is awesome. I'm really enjoying it. So I'm gonna to continue to work on that you know, 10, 20 minutes a day, and that's gonna give me a big advantage for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it helps me with speed. You know, yes, my legs are quite strong and I've got natural kind of athleticism. I work hard on footwork and I work hard on that type of thing. But speed in tennis is about how quickly you can read where the ball's going, how quickly you can react to things. So the brain-based training is awesome for that side of things. It also helps with focus and concentration and decision-making and discipline. And I would say they are already strengths of mine. That's kind of what I do well. I get to the ball, I remain focused, and I get the ball back in play. So I'm gonna use the VR training and my other brain-based training techniques to continue to work on that side of things. Now, if you would like to learn more about that, the VR program isn't ready to go yet, hopefully by uh, the start of next year, but I do have a coaching program where I teach players how to use brain-based training to improve their tennis performance. So if you'd like to learn more about that, I've created a class that explains a lot more about how it works and how my program functions. I'll place a link to the class up there and a link to the class down there. So you can check that out if you are interested because that's the brain training side of things. But the other big thing for me moving forwards and this is probably the most important piece for me is trying to stay healthy. Now I do work in the gym, you know, strengthening and working on flexibility in addition to the brain training to reduce the, the chances of getting injured. But a lot of my problems are related to autoimmune issues. So if you don't know what that is, an autoimmune issue is when your immune system starts to attack different tissues within your body. And when that happens, it can create a lot of challenges. For me, unfortunately, uh, my immune system has been attacking my digestive system, and it's been attacking a few different areas of my brain. And the way it works is things trigger your immune system, and then it starts to go crazy. So unfortunately, when the pandemic came along, the virus 
wasn't too kind on my, uh, my immune system. So I started to have a lot of issues over the last few years. And that meant that there was many periods throughout this left-handed journey where I just wasn't able to play at all because I was in too much pain. I seem to have got my immune system under control. The way I've done it is with being ridiculously diligent with nutrition. So at the moment, all I can eat is basically beef, pork, a little bit of chicken, honey I can get away with, and I can get away with a little bit of goat cheese occasionally as well. So my diet consists of those, oh, and sheep's cheese. So I can get away with those six foods at the moment. Anything else that I eat tends to leave me in pretty much constant pain, and that stops me from practicing and from doing my other training that keeps me healthy. So moving forwards, big focus for me, staying disciplined with the nutrition. And if I stay disciplined with the nutrition, hopefully I'll be able to stay healthy enough to continue to practice. And as I continue to practice, I'm confident that I'm gonna to continue to improve and I'll be able to get to the point where six months time, I'll be able to win a couple of those 4.5 tournaments. Now, if there are any of the 4.5s in my area that are watching this, I've explained what I'm working on, I've explained my tactics, how I'm gonna be trying to approach things. Your job is to stop me being able to do that and to prove me wrong. And if you do that, we'll hopefully have some good matches next year. So if you've got any questions or comments about this video, I would love to hear them, leave them down below for me. If you have enjoyed this video, it's much appreciated if you could give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, it's always helpful for the algorithm if you could do that side of things as well. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you next time.